here I am. Either crazy or stupid, or both, on a nice balmy 26 degree December 18th morning. Where else would you be, huh? Laying in bed on your vacation? No, sir. Get up and fly. Gorgeous morning. We got high pressure, calm winds at the surface and at altitude. Not a lot of air traffic out here in the morning because no one else is this stupid. <laughs> so, we're going to Rush County. Why not? Get some covered bridge pictures without leaves on the trees. Let's call in for a radio check, make sure all of our radio gear is working. Let's catch the weather here. Weather observation 1435 Zulu. Wind 080 at 03. Visibility 5. Alright, that means we got a long taxi. Temperature minus 01 Celsius. Dew point minus 03 Celsius. Altimeter 3025. Remarks. Density altitude minus 1200. I like a low density altitude. This sucker's gonna hop right off the ground. All right, let's call in the Unicom here. Shelbyville Unicom, experimental power parachute, seven two nine or Mike Papa, radio check. Make sure we're transmitting. Radio yeah, check loud and clear. Thank you, sir. this morning. Alright, let's get this show or whatever it is on the road. Microphone boom just doesn't want to stay. Where I'll put it. Alright, let's taxi. Okay, we got water in there, we got the camera. Got our pilot certificate, got our checklist in our pocket here. Then the pre flight. Then the warm up. Thank you. 
come here and look at. Look for my. This is where I landed last time, so right here I'm going to come look for my GoPro clip that I dropped. This is really bumpy, man. Damn. Man, it's really bumpy. So that'll be good. Good turn here. is 10 miles to the north on a practice RNF-1 into Eagle Creek. Simulated engine out. We'll be breaking off and circling for runway 3 Eagle Creek traffic. Shelbyville traffic power parachute Niner Mike Pop is parked in the southwest corner of runway 9 or we need 10 minutes to set up the parachute. We'll be away from the radio during that time. Shelbyville. Density altitude minus 1,100. Shelbyville Municipal Airport, Shelbyville, Indiana. Automated weather observation 1454 Zulu. Wind 110 at 03. Visibility 9. All right. Let's get our checklist too. Helmet, engines warming up, mag check we did, lines clear, altimeter set, needs a tweak, seat belts, runway pattern, alright, here we go. Hopefully it's not bumpy. Bag secure, camera rolling. Camera secure and off. Need to give it a few more degrees here on the temperature. We'll let it get 135. I'll take a second here and it'll bail. Four, thirty-five. Shelbyville traffic, experimental power pushing seven two nine or Mike Papa departing runway nine or Shelbyville. Pardon me? 
Moscow. Traffic for all power pressure 729 Mike Puppet departing the pattern to the east, show me that. Eagle Creek traffic, Seminole 32 Big Uniform is turning uh, final for runway 3 Eagle Creek traffic. We're about 550 feet up. I might go up a little higher and see if I can find some smooth air, maybe at a thousand or something. Get away from the airport here first. Full image 
stabilization on the lens too, because we'll get rocked around. Especially if we get a little, little lower, and this time of day we can get bumped around. And that's the other half of it too. When you're getting knocked, it's hard to keep the thing still in the viewfinder enough to where the IS will kick in and stabilize the image. I'm going to jig back around here, make sure there's no aircraft behind us. GPS app to record my tracks. All right, 24 miles an hour, 23, so we're doing a little better up higher here. The other problem I have when I'm shooting, because I got this face shield, I got to put it up when I shoot, of course, to see through the camera. But the cold air I get in my eyes, and my eyes just water up just instantly. And that makes it impossible to see almost anything through the viewfinder. So a lot of times I'm shooting blind, <laughs> which kind of sucks. I can't see the camera setting information at the bottom of the viewfinder to make sure that I've got enough aperture and shutter speed to where I'm not getting any underexposures or anything. So that's another thing I fight. The other thing is, too, before I even start taking pictures of anything, if I'm really going to concentrate on the subject, i got to clear the airspace, make sure there's nothing around. I'm looking for power lines, looking for towers, looking for other airplanes, looking for a place to land if I have to, if the engine were to cut out. So we'll probably stay pretty high for these pictures, um, 800 feet at least, which is about, we're about 900 now. 18, yeah, we're at 800. Now we're a thousand. Never mind. 1800 MSL, so we're a thousand feet above the ground. So we'll see how the, the skies look. You can kind of tell it's a bit hazy out here too. So we might have to go just a bit lower. We'll see. I'm going to jink over this way real quick. Make sure there's nobody coming. One nice thing about flying this high, I don't have to worry about the power lines. Usually a lot of times I like to scoot pretty low. away from towers. There's no towers this high around here. There's no power lines. Just other airplanes. And most guys don't fly this low except for the powered paraglider guys and they're not around here this morning. And that steerman that flies out of Shelbyville he'll come down this low too. So that's it in a nutshell. So this will be a good little narration to go with uh, my little vlog here. We'll narrate as we go, too, so you can kind of see it in action, too, when we get up to Moscow up here for the first bridge. If anybody has any questions, too, just put them in the comment section, you know, either on my website or on the YouTube page here. And let me know. I'm more than happy to answer. It's always fun to have a project. A lot of times it's great to go out and just fart around and fly for fun. Awesome to do that, but it's fun to have a purpose too. I feel like the ninja photographer pilot this morning too. All bundled up. I put pen warmers in my boots this time. The last time I took a two hour flight. It was about, I don't know, 32 degrees, and my feet were freezing at the end, so I took a couple hand warmers and stuck them up on my toes and my boots. So we'll see how that helps. I've got a pair of my hands on the back side of my gloves here, too. The other thing I wear when I'm shooting when it's cold is these mitten gloves. i got to be able to work the camera so I can take the cover off, get my fingers out, where I can work the camera buttons and whatnot. So that's a handy-dandy thing up over some high tension lines. We're coming up on Blue Ridge up here. We'll point you back ahead. So Blue Ridge, 
just probably, that's a little over halfway to Moscow, our first target. That's a big long cover bridge. It was destroyed by a tornado several years ago and then it was rebuilt. <coughs> I got some pictures, of, I don't know, a year and a half ago down there. And it was uh, in the morning. And I happened to catch a couple of Amish buggies going into the bridge, which is really cool. There's a lot of Amish that live in Rush County, Indiana. One of the cover bridges we're going to cover is not over the river. It was over the river in Homer, Indiana, which is up 44, out just to the east of us here. And they took it off, and it's in this Pioneer Acres Park place. And uh, so we'll catch it even though it's not over water. It's right on the way. The nice thing about this is all the bridges are over the, all but one are over the Flat Rock River. So. Flat Rock River runs through Rushville and kind of goes you know, southwest to northeast. And we're catching the southwestmost bridge. Then we'll just follow the river up and we'll go bing, bing, bing. We'll pick off the bridges. We'll skirt right across the south edge of Rushville. The last bridge is northeast of Arlington, Indiana. Off its covered bridge. It's a real short little bridge. Got awesome pictures of that last time. I don't, well, I won't have the great light. I'm not going to have the orange warning. You know, nice light that I'd like to have, but that's all right. Artistic isn't the purpose on this. It's more documentary for the Rush County Historical Society. They took a few of my pictures last time of the bridges I got, and they're using them for some of their tourist brochures and that kind of thing. And that reminds me, I got to go see if I can find those things and check them out. I'd like to see what they look like. I gave them a few. Don't mind giving away the pictures for that. I can't legally sell any pictures I take flying here because I don't have a commercial pilot certificate. So in order to work for a furtherance of a business or make money or anything, the FAA says you have to have a commercial pilot certificate. So I have a sport pilot certificate. And there is no such thing as a commercial sport pilot certificate. I'd have to get a regular private certificate, private pilot's license, and then go on and get a commercial certificate. That's going to take years and cost tens of thousands of dollars to do that. And I'm just flying for fun. You know, I can spend tens of thousands of dollars and make hundreds <laughs> taking pictures. It's not quite a good trade-off. Of course, I'd have a pilot's license and be able to, you know, work for hire and do other stuff. But that's not my goal. My goal is coming up on retirement here in a few years, maybe a little under three years, the dang stock market ever gets off its butt. And just fly for fun, take pictures, and document like I'm doing for the Shelby County Historical Society as well. They have a thing called the Grover Museum. And uh, I've been taking pictures of downtown Shelbyville for that. To kind of record what the city looks like for future generations because they have pictures from, you know, 1900s, 1800s, so I'll add mine to the collection from an aerial point of view anyway. And we're starting with Shelbyville, and then we're gonna work on with, uh, yeah, I went south, I went too far south, and I went on the south side of Blue Ridge, I wasn't watching, sitting here talking, that's okay. Went a little bit out of our way, but not much. I didn't think that looked like Blue Ridge, so. 244 is right down over here. So we're gonna go up. I should have been up over there, but I was talking instead of navigate. Aviate, navigate, communicate, damn it. Did too much communicate. That's already. We're not lost. We're just not set about a mile from where I wanted to be, but it ain't no thing. So this road 244 here goes over to Milroy where I was married. Bit of trivia there. And along the way, just northeast of Moscow right there is a little shop guy, Amish guy by the name of Levi Detweiler. He builds cabinets. Hell of a cabinet maker. He built our kitchen cabinets and our bathroom cabinets when we remodeled our house a couple of years ago. Incredible craftsmanship from this guy. It's unbelievable. Check our instruments here. Last 
time we flew down here in the morning to Moscow to get some pictures of a house for somebody right by the bridge. We were coming back and it was getting bumpy and the, we had clouds forming up about 800 feet or so. So we had to kind of steer clear of those. But it was kind of cool flying around on top of them. Shut up and look. Navigate here. Moscow is dead ahead, probably four miles. I can see exactly where it's at. It's right off our nose here. safety cables on my GoPro and on this camera and I have tape right here on my lens hood. I lost the lens hood one time and just hit my leg and popped off and I had to buy a guy one. I brought his lens just like this. It's going to be bucks for this stupid piece of plastic so now I tape it on so I know I don't lose it. But that's another bit of safety thing so in case somewhere happened to the strap or camera to come loose it's uh, cabled on to my neck strap. So. More bits of info for you. Alright, let's check six here. We're still about a thousand feet up. Good and comfy. Franklin. I may drive down there after we get done with this flight and just go to the airport and talk to him. Pretty buttery smooth up high here. I like buttery air. It's cold buttery air, but hey. on that little jog in the road up here at 244. Right up there you can see ahead of us. Let's go ahead and check the checks real quick here. See our shadow down yonder on the ground. I had an extra week of vacation from work, so my last day was December 14th, and I'm off until January 2nd. So, I want to do a lot of this while I'm off. Cold be damned. Any flyable day, I'm going to try to get up. You don't need to winterize this thing. Winterize it by flying it. coming up off our 11 o'clock up here. I 
also had to remount my lower GoPro camera. Last flight when I sat down in the seat, my boot hit one of the little screws and knocked it off. And it's out there on the runway. I pretty much know where it's at because I saw the video from the camera itself. So I got another mount and I put it back on the lower foot peg, but this time I used an old mouse pad for a shock absorber like I do on the mount for this GoPro. And I'm going to hope that it reduces the vibration, so this is a test flight for that. That lower camera is kind of pointed down and forward to give me an unobstructed view, kind of a fixed view. And this one, of course, I got on a little bullhead. I use a super clamp to my CG tube here. And the GoPro's on there, and I've got audio piped in, of course, because you can hear me.
gauges, engine gauges, look for airplanes.
shot from this angle. Watch head on. Ball set out shot. Get 
sun here any second now. Alright, let's head north. We got our prop wash or something there. Let's head back on north to get the next bridge. It's about a mile north. See it this summer, man, all the leaves. Alright, let's do a tower check, power line check, altitude check. Airplane check. Bump check, yep, there's a bump. Road 
three here. We are north of Richville, Indiana. This is three that goes up to a I-70 eventually.
We're down about 600, 700 feet. save a little time so the mission here this morning was to hit the six Rush County cover bridges again starting with Moscow on the Flat Rock River that's the southernmost and then working our way up and around Rushville <coughs> and then the one northeast of Arlington we just did so we did that the other little secondary mission was to fly over the Rushville Quam for Tiffany and get a couple shots which we did I know she saw us. I didn't see her down there. May have been to lunch. Who knows? But we did that. Next phase of the mission is to get home and land safely. And we are doing that. I see Shelbyville ahead. Good ways away. Probably 15 miles or better. So I can see the smoke from Kanaf. Heading back to the airport. It's not too terribly bumpy. Winds are calm back home. Kind of kicking back, not taking any pictures, keep our fingers warm, watching our instruments, talking to you guys. A lot of haze layer up toward India up there, I'll aid you that way. You can see that haze layer up there. You can see Morristown over there buggy plant, the big cement storage bins. We're about a thousand feet above the ground roughly, cruising along at a blistering 30 miles, 30 miles per hour. Getting rolled a little bit. This way, make sure no one's behind. That yellow cord you see in front of the camera there is my steering line. When I press on my foot, it pulls the back edge of the parachute back, causes drag, causes it to turn in that direction. That's how I can shoot pictures easily with this thing as I'm steering with my feet. This stick here in front of me. Turn this around. Stick here controls the throttle, which controls the altitude. So, see this foot, if I press this foot, we'll go that way. See, we did a nice turn. Ease out on it, we press this foot, we go the other way. Add power, climb, push forward, lower power, you descend. It's just that easy. In theory, there's a substation down over here. A lot of power lines coming here. And we're getting little bumps. Nothing like summertime thermals, though. So it could be fun landing. We could have some rock and roll on the landing. So that last couple miles when we're down low, we'll probably get rocked pretty good. So watch for that. stayed half pattern altitude, pattern altitude is 1,000 feet, so we usually stay about 400 feet above the ground when we're near the airport, stay out of everybody else's way. Big Blue River up here. See Little Mary in ahead. Been up two hours and 15 minutes, give or take a couple minutes. Do a little drink here. Actually, let's go ahead and turn on the radio and hear what's going on at the area. Around the area here. 
Tommy said they said uh, uh, the alarm shot traffic. Chancellor, 4701 Alpha, 15 miles southwest, inbound for left. And uh, runway 2. Start looking for airplanes. Jerry huh? says that he didn't leave anything in. I didn't, I didn't bring anything in. So yeah, go ahead. Cessna 63 Charlie Echo, 5 miles to the south. Uh, if my passengers aren't there yet, I'll get a little bit of fuel, but if they're there, then I'll probably just head on out. Uh, I'm familiar, you don't need to come out. Uh, so much for the peace of quiet. Everybody's talking. Is that it? These are free traffic, sir. It's 4 4 5 3 4 5 5 5 5 5 the big blue river here. We're about 600 north, Shelby County, north of Shelbyville. State Road 9 is up ahead here. Uh, 73 Lima, flying about two miles to the northeast at 3,000. Uh, Prince Lake City traffic. Shelbyville traffic, experimental power pressure, 729 or Mike Pappas, three miles to the northeast, 1,600 feet. We'll be setting up to land to the south on the grass between Taxway Alpha and Bravo in front of the hangar, Shelbyville. Shelbyville traffic, Sirius 420, Gulf Whiskey, clear the act of Shelbyville. Lima, down here. Just as I predicted, you can see us rocking a little bit. Last two miles will be a little bit of a ride, but I can handle that. Eagle Creek traffic, Sirius 44, the Kino Point, five miles to the northwest. We're bouncing later on that way to Eagle Creek. We're going to be right over wide open fields, so... Back there. And uh, Sirius departing uh, Eagle Creek, what's your position? Uh, getting ready to turn crosswind. Up in the air. Eagle Creek traffic, Sirius 44, Vic Uniform is going to do a right circle for spacing just north of the 56th Street Bridge, Eagle Creek. There we go. Fire. Here's 4-1, big uniform, turn cross my runway 3, Eagle Creek. It's 12.22, it'll be two, uh, two and a half hours by the time we land here. Eagle Creek, Alex, here's 4-1, big uniform, turn down my runway 3, Eagle Creek. I like seeing that smoke from Kanaf going straight up. That's good for us. Traffic, experimental power parachute, 729 or Mike Pappas, half mile to the east, 1100 feet, entering a tight low left base, landing to the south between Taxiway Alpha and Bravo on the grass, Shelbyville. Here we come.
caution off the hangers. Take this off, now you can watch me and hear me pack up the parachute. And you guys never get to see this. I'll turn the camera around and you can see what this is all about. I got the line out so I got the speaker. So we got line socks here. Kind of hold these lines. Keep from getting tangled. So we first we put those on both sides. So we zip it up here, snap it up here, and then we zip it all up. A lot of manual labor in flying this thing between setting up and packing up. One side and we got one sock for the other side. Do the same thing over there. We got our parachute bag and we stuff the chute. 